请收看《用意利人天》。So uh, Lao Tzu originally opposed valuing external objects over its own, your own person. And in the commentary to this passage, the Sanger says, if you act according to the intention of the Tao, not cherishing your person, not seeking glory and ease, not eating and drinking extravagantly, dressing shabbily and traveling incognito, such a person will certainly come to possess the empire through inaction, Wu Wei. By preserving simplicity and purity, he accords with the intention of the Tao. Now, one of the particular focuses of early Taoism was sacrifice. Um, sacrifice is a very ancient practice in China. It began at least in the Shang Dynasty, quite possibly earlier. It involves the offering of food and drink to ancestors and spirits. The spirits are thought to partake of these offerings through the scent, but in the process infuse the offerings with blessings, fu qi. And these blessings can then be shared with members of the family and close friends through a communal ritual banquet. And that's why banqueting is so important in China. And that's why we get food fed such great food every night. <laughs> so we should be thankful for that. But Taoism strongly opposed sacrifice. They said the Taoist gods do not eat or drink. So they do not need sacrifice. Shen bu yin shi. Gods who accept sacrifice, on the other hand, are little better than demons. They're dependent on human beings, and they consume filthy stuff like bloody dead animals and things like that. Taoism instead posited three offices, three bureau government bureaus, heaven, earth, and water, to control all of these blood-eating spirits. And as long as the Sanguan control them, it's fine. The problem is when they get out of the control of the three offices, and then they wreak havoc on the world. Okay. The Xiang'e commentary specifically condemns sacrifice because Taoist citizens, members of the Taoist church, who keep their precepts, this is the most important thing in early Taoism, maintaining your precepts, the commandments, uh, do not need to seek fortune through sacrifice. Moreover, sacrifice is polluting. Pollution was a major concern in early Taoism. They say, the correct rituals of heaven do not lie in sacrificing and lustrating to pray and entreat. Um, for this reason, the Tao has prohibited sacrificing and lustrating to pray and entreat and responds to it with severe punishment. Right? And a man of the Tao will refuse to consume anything that has ever been sacrifice to one of these lower level spirits. Uh, another important early text was the Xuan Du Lu and the Statutes of the Mysterious Capital. It is a collection of these precepts from the early church. The text as we have it now is not necessarily 
all that early, but there's, it was cited very early, so it must have been in existence, and I think the portions I'm citing are early portions. Uh, one is an example of a sunset offering. You must not eat the food from a sunset offering. We don't even know what this is. This is a popular practice that fell out of, of use uh, centuries ago, but it was obviously of concern to the early Taoist church that you not participate on. Um, if you offend against this statue, you will be fined a thousand days worth of counters. In other words, your lifespan will be shortened by something like three years. Okay, and then again, Taoist priests and female officers all must not permit the citizens to make sacrificial offerings to the spirits, killing pigs and goats with words of sorcery and confusing talk. Okay, now another major feature of the early church was the three assemblies, three communal meetings of people in each parish on the first, seventh day of the first month, seventh day of the seventh month, and fifth day of the 10th month. It was believed on these dates that heavenly spirits of the Tao actually descended into each local parish of the church simultaneously. Oh, I don't know what that's called, but I'm, I'm sure people here know multiple manifestations at the same time. And ate a communal meal. They would do a series of things at these meetings. They would update the family records to make sure that we know exactly who's in the church and what they're doing. They would discuss the conduct of citizens and decide rewards and punishments. And they would provide a Taoist banquet, a kitchen. Now, this is different from a sacrificial banquet. That's important to note. It's vegetarian. It does include alcohol, but only in limited mo amounts. And because the Taoist gods themselves are present, you have to be solemn and respectful throughout it. No carousing like we were doing last night. So it says, on the auspicious days of the assemb assemblies, the fe male and female officers come face to face with the celestial spirits, teach and convert the foolish and profane, distribute merit and virtue, and cause humans and spirits to respond to each other. But recently, the officers kill and cook domestic animals. The, this is the most important line for me. To kill the living in search of life is to depart far from life. Okay, one explanation for why there, there is this uh, specific prohibition on sacrifice. Taoist citizens and Taoist priests all had a very diverse internal microcosmic body that contained many spirits. Even a normal Taoist citizen would get nine prospective spirits together with a special talisman. Then as you start progressing through the church hierarchy, you get one general register, which gives you one general, 20 clerks, like non-com officers, and 100 soldiers. By the time you get a full register of 150 generals, that's 150 generals, 33,000 clerks, and 15,000 troops under your personal command. Now the problem is, these are troops that you can use to quell demons or to safeguard an area or things like that. But at the same time, they are watching you and noting all of your actions and misdeeds. So if you do things like eating food of, from sacrifice, the soldiers might just leave and leave you unprotected, or they might actually decide to punish you themselves. And so that's one of the reasons why you really need to avoid sacrifice or anything that has to do with sacrifice. You can't even go by a place where people have been doing sacrifice. Okay. Now, um, that's the situation in the early church. I found a very interesting Dunhuang manuscript that also talks about Taoist prohibitions on food and eating. The Lao Tzu Shuo Fa Shi Jin Jie Jing, prohibitions and precepts for ritual foods spoken by Lao Tzu. This is dated perhaps to the late Six Dynasties or the beginning of a Tang, brought back by Paul Pelliot at the beginning of the 20th century. 
And it has some parallels in existing texts, but this text as it is does not exist, was never transmitted to, to modern days. We only have this one manuscript copy of it. And here are some similar later texts that might be related. <laughs> Uh, in this text, the narrator himself is Lao Tzu, who is said to be endowed with an immortal body. Uh, and the method that he recommends is that you should embrace the Tao, accumulate virtue, protect the spirit, and do no evil. That's just sort of the general moral of, of the group. But eating and drinking, according to this scripture, are key to longevity. It says, the reason why people die early and suffer many maladies, <clears throat> die during ill-fated periods, and are able to leave out the heavenly ordained longevity is because they do not observe the prohibitions and precepts. They give free rein to their emotions and desires, giving birth and killing without limits, and eating and drinking irresponsibly. Now, in this scripture, Lao Tzu sets out five ritual food groups, qi, medicine, grains, fruits, and vegetables, and gives a short description of each one, which I'll read now. Numas referred to the guiding and pulling of numas, embryonic breathing, exhaling stale and inhaling fresh numas, breathing the primordial essence, and regulating the six numas. A lot of this sounds like what uh, Livia was talking about yesterday in one of the methods of cultivation, <laughs> something like modern qigong. Medicine refers, of course, to the herbal elements of Chinese medicine, but also to the minerals used to create divine elixirs. So medicines refers to golden jade, fungal blossoms, yellow essence, gochi berries, even those are popular now, white attractylitis, attractylis, pine and cedar seeds, which regulate the body and fluids, protect and nurture the body and its spirits, settles the cloud souls and steadies the resolve, driving out wetness and wind. These are in, uh, external uh, environmental factors that can cause disease, adding to one's lifespan and one's years. Staples is the way I've translated gu. It mostly means grain, but not only that. Staples refers to broom corn and foxtail millet, hemp and water caltrop, rice and paddy rice, and the various beans. So if you harvest and consume them according to ritual, they will fill your viscera and storehouses, preserve your numas, and harmonize your body. Fruits refers to jujubes, chestnuts, and various fruits and nuts, and vegetables to the flowers and leaves of plants and trees that are edible. Harvest them according to the season. I think that's important. Okay, uh, there is some ritual preparation for this. First, the eating is supposed to occur at the proper time, and this may be a bit surprising. You are only supposed to eat during a period of living numas, or yang numas. And that is from midnight until mid-morning. So midnight until maybe 10, 30, 11 in the morning. That's when you're supposed to eat, only then. And you should also precede any eating with a ritual. Pay reverence to all the gods and repent your faults. When eating, you should maintain pure quiescence, qing jing. This is actually a ritual state of mind that the early Taoists advocated. Acknowledge the Taoist trinity and all the deities. Visualize the three ones, the three highest deities of uh, of Taoism, the three pures, and five gods of the viscera, your five primary organs. Once seated comfortably, one should swallow breaths and eat. So there's also this consumption of qi along with the, the physical objects in, in, the, uh, in the meal. Now, there's certain uh, rules for eating. 
Chinese society at the time was quite conservative. Men and women should not eat together. You shouldn't share plates with anyone. You shouldn't bump into one of the uh, fellow guests. You shouldn't try to pick out the best parts of the food. You know, when it comes around, you know, it's, it's just not improper. And you should never get up in the middle of the meal either. Uh, there's rules that make it really hard to eat with non-Taoists because you have to maintain this attitude of pure quiescence and these non-Daoists who keep talking to you and stuff. Um, don't allow those not of our faith to pollute or mix in. And Taoist priests should eat the quality of food appropriate to their station. Do not lust after delicious flavors. So that's sort of interesting. You know your position in society and don't try to exceed it. Um, there are also some practical concerns that you see that, that modern hygienists might agree with. Gargle before eating. Don't eat pasta or rice that fell into the dirt. Don't eat grain contaminated by passing birds. Uh, don't eat from unclean vessels. Don't eat food that's not in season, that's not seasonal. But there's also some that are based on ritual identity. So if you're a Taoist, you shouldn't eat food from a family that's in mourning, that has recently exper experienced a death in the family, or has just, someone has just given birth. Both of these involve death and blood, and they're polluting. You shouldn't eat the food of robbers or the dissolute, things like that. You should not eat food sacrificed to temple spirits. We're coming back to that again. That remains a rule through most of Taoist history. Do not eat defiled wine, meat, or mushrooms. This is a little bit of a puzzler. Does it mean only certain types of wine and meat, or does it mean all wine and meat? Uh, something we might discuss. Do not eat food defiled by children or women, and do not eat the food of non-believers. Okay, I'm getting close. Um, so some of this ritual eating has ecological implications, I would argue. Excess food, it said, should be given to the animals or the poor. It should be redistributed. You shouldn't take it back home as leftovers, which is the common practice nowadays. Uh, you should avoid extravagant and rare foods, which you can see are, possibly damaging to the world. And a Taoist before eating should always ask, is there someone who needs this food more? Because Taoists can always get by consuming numas, chi, breath, but other people need food. So a Taoist priest, when he's about to eat, if they see a person who possesses the Tao, they should give the food to them. If they see a worthy person, they should first give the food to them. If they see someone aged or infirm, they should first give food to them. If they see someone is hungry or cold, they should first give food to them. If they see a ritual master, they should first give it to them. We have lots of fascia in the religion. We might never get to eat anything if we were here, huh? So, <laughs> um, so ultimately, this is all summed up. Lao Tzu promises, promises positive income outcomes if you follow these rules. If Taoist priests, whenever eating, can maintain these pro prohibitions and precepts, never offending against them, then the various heavens will extend the years and increase the fate counters of that person, augmenting their clothing and food, so that for generation after generation they will flourish and thrive, and will eternally enjoy this spontaneously. So longevity and internal, eternal spontaneity. So uh, just to make a quick conclusion, um, the ver basic principles of Taoist ritual eating, you should eat only at the appropriate time of day. You should eat in a state of pure quiescence. Again, this is what we say, uh, wu wei, non-action. Uh, eat only after expressing reverence to the deities, both in attendance and inside one's own body. Later. You should also include the consumption of pneumas and elixirs that, that uh, uh, probably wasn't part of the earliest church, but as we saw by the end of the Six Dynasties or Tang, sort of medieval times, it is part of the practice. Avoid food offered for sacrifice. 
including, I think, all meat. It seems that the Dao early Taoists, at least, were really vegetarians at a time when the Buddhists were not. So what does that say for vegetarianism in China? And of course, you should avoid all contaminated food. So I do think that we see some overlap here with our own modern concerns about the fate of the world, the, like the prohibition on meat and the avoidance of killing are all both compassionate, but also save resources for the world. And the advocacy of local, seasonal, undefiled full food and a vegetarian diet, I think would be considered positive by a lot of people around the world today. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. So thank you very much, particularly for telling me I am in breach of most of the Taoist rules <laughs> about eating and will not achieve longevity, but I will not hold this against you. So with this sad comment, I will pass to the next speaker, Dr. Hong Chancheng, who will talk about lamp lighting at Taoist altars in Taiwan. Thank you for everyone, and and let me give me a chance to, uh, to uh, talk about my new research. Um, this research was hold, uh, always held in north of Taiwan, uh, the city, Tainan city. Uh, now I've. First, I, I introduce the researcher who, who need the Yao Wang Chan. And during this researcher, uh, during the funeral in Tainan and other part of Taiwan, Taoist priests or monks are invited to perform the religious ritual of worship the god of medicine, so called. Bai Yao Wang. Some people believe that uh, only commit suicide in the past. In the past, in the past, some people believe that only those who commit suicide by taking poison need to worship God of medicine. And some people believe that people who die from long-term illness and need to worship the God of medicine. But currently, funeral in Tainan no longer mm, differentiate between those who die of poisoning, poisoning or those who die of illness. They all use the mask of worshiping the God of medicine to help the disease that Lead to, lead to a healthy journey to the other world. What is the purpose uh, of the ritual? There are three purposes. Of healing the body of the dead, help source lift hell, help source reconcile with enemy, absorb sort of sin. But, mm, Tainan Dais used the Yao Wang Chan to perform the ritual of worshiping the medicine god. In addition to reciting scriptures when worshiping the god of medicine, the Taoist priests will uh, prepare a part of Chinese medicine and dark eggs with the name of medicine written on land. And pray the, to the God of medicine to drop the elixir into the Chinese medicine and ducks, duck eggs. 
At the end of the ceremony, the Taoist priest will pour Chinese medicine into a cup and pull the cup close to the fig, paper figure, simply symbolizing the deceit and make the gesture of feeding the paper figure medicine or smear medicine on paper figure to treat the soul of the deceit. And finally, the Taoist priest will break the part to symbolize that the disease no longer need, need to take medicine and to send away the evil spirit of the medicine. It is recorded in the scripture that 49 lamps need to be lit during the ceremony, but the request has, has, has been gradually forgotten by the Taoist priest in Tainan. The purpose of the ceremony show in the ceremony scene, Yao Wang Tan is used to restore the mutilated body of the disease or the organ of the disease to return to healthy state so that the disease has a healthy body and then he can be qualified to be safe, to be safe. But the purpose recorded in Yao Wang Chan tells us this ritual is to used to help soul lift hair and help soul reconcile with the enemy and absorb soul of sin. But most Taoist priests will not mention these three purposes when explaining the meaning of the ritual to people. Why? This is because this matter is rela related to forgetting to lighten the lamp. Because Taoist priests are used to not lighten lamp when reciting Yao Wang Chan, then they forget that Yao Wang Chan is a ritual of lamp. Because the only two used at the ceremony were medicine and dark eggs, which are more related to medical treatment of body. It is difficult for Taoist priests to use this thing to explain why the purpose of the ceremony is to relate to helping soul live hair. In addition, at time, as time passed, later Taoist priests gradually forget the purpose of the ceremony. This also shows that the study of Taoist classics may not necessarily reflect the true history of Taoism. What's more serious is that reality has nothing to do with classics. The picture is show that the 49 lamp in, the, in this ritual. Some Taoist priests still remember this. As far as Yao Wang Chan is concerned, lighting up is the most important thing. Most of the content of Yao Wang Chan is plain why that need this class and tell the readers that in order to help the soul of the deceased who die of illness. 49 lamps need to be lit so that they can see the light and use the light to leave the darkness or hell. However, 
less known such region in Dallas Canal, Canal about using lamp to hear the source of that. So some scholars believe that this classic come from Buddhism. Based on the following reason, they believe that Yao Wang Chan come from the Buddhist Ci Bei Yao Shi Bao Chan. The first reason is Yao Wang Chan and the Buddhist Ci Bei Yao Shi Bao Chan both save the dead through the merits of lighting the 49 light lamp. Reason two, both lamp allow the dead to enter heaven through reptance, Yao Wang Chan, and the Buddhist Yao Shi Ci Bei Bao Chan have the same thought. But in my opinion, Yao Wang Chan is separate from Taoist scripture. Reason one, this scripture of Yao Wang Chan was excerpted from volume four of Tai Shang Ci Bei Jiu You Ba Zui Chan and the San Guan Jin. In particular, the part that describe the method of constructing the 49 lamp, lamp tree and the specification of lamp. Lamp tree is a complete copy of the scripture contents of Tai Shang Ci Bei Jiu You Fa Chan. Now I can, we can see the scripture. And the left is Zhou Yu Chan. And the right is Yao Wang Chan. The content both exactly the same. The medical thing The medical thinking is the same as the mainstream opinion when ritual of Tian Yi, God of Medicine, was founded. The ritual of God of Medicine was found in the Song Dynasty, and the mainstream medical thought of healing disease saw in the Song Dynasty. However, people will feel pain due to disease because they have a body. If there is nobody, they will not, there will be no physical pain and still feeling uncomfortable with physical pain after this. It is a psychological problem. This kind of psychological problem needs to be dealt with TNE richer. What the dead soul need to be here is their mindset. Sorry, I can translate into English. In Song Dynasty, uh, Jing Yun Zhong, the Shang Qin Lin Bao Da Fa, scholars who advocate the theory of hearing minds in Song Dynasty, they believe that after a person lost his body, his, his soul should return to a perfect state. But because of inner problems, he thinks he is sick or in hell. Taoist priests who advocated this include Jin Yun Zhong, Lu Shi Zhong, Lin Lin Zhen, and Jiang Shu Yu. This Taoist priest, they believe that if you die, you will return to the perfect state. You will 
no longer pain, no longer, mm, you didn't need to have any ritual of medicine. Just you have to light your heart. In Song Dynasty, mm, have a tendency of hell existing in the heart. After the existence of hell was determined to be in the human mind, the ritual of breaking hell, Po Yu, was considered to be used to break psychology barriers and the pain of illness suffered by the diseased soul was so considered to be psychology barriers. The ritual of breaking hell may be misappropriate hearing the dead. There's, a, there's an uh, uh, intersection of the concept of mental illness and the concept of mental uh, prison. Because someone commits a crime, he, he has imprisoned to inhale, however, some Taoist priests in the Song Dynasty believe that people return to a perfect state after death and were innocent after feeling or fell into hell because of crime, are just a matter of heart. When the heart empty, he will disappear and, and hell will be broken. We can see um, this word in the uh, Lin Bao Lin Jiao Jin Shu, Lin Bao Yu Jian. Both of led, these two books that those who believe that the location of hell is in the heart will also believe that people will be free from illness after death and do not need medicine treatment through qi and light. The soul of the dead are no longer attached to their heart. Perhaps because this intersection phenomenon, the, the Yao Wang Chan in Tainan used them to hear the soul of the dead using the power of light to remove the unconscious habits of souls. But this intersection is not an accident. The ritual structure of Wu Shang, Shi Wang Liu Li Yao Shi Bao Chan, a Lin Bao Taoist author in Kaohsiung. If we, did, if we, would, we do not discuss the part that is not reco recorded in the scripture, that is the part of cooking medicine for the soul to drink. The content of the scripture is different from less in Tainan. The Yao Wang Chan is very different, but its main structure to help the diseased soul escape from the hell by confessing their sin and lighting them for them. But it does not help the diseased soul to repair their body. This kind of intercession may be a change. While the Tainan Taoists didn't use the 49 lamps because they confusing the seven star lamp with 49 lamps and, uh, and forgetting the spirits of the ceremony. It's bad for Taoists, it's bad for Taoists present in Jiali, Beiman, Xue Jia. Tainan Taoist priests no longer regard Yao Wang Chan as the lamp reacher, but pay more, pay more attention to feeding medicine to the soul 
of the dead and getting rid of some of medicine. Perhaps the arrangement of space or ritual objects is changing the connotation of our belief. This phenomenon will also occurring, occur when banning the use of incense stick, incense banner, and the gold paper. My speech will hold its own first. And we start now a second part of our session where we talk uh, uh, about uh, uh, movements outside China or Taiwan. And the first uh, paper is uh, Professor Michael Welsh, and it is uh, about Kaudai. We have a lot of Kaudai friends here, and so you are already familiar with Kaudai. <laughs> But now you will have uh, more information about their cosmology. Yeah, and and while, the, while this uh, loads up, I'll just uh, say I've had such a joy working on this. It's a very ambitious project, as you'll see. Um, but it's been such a joy to work on it. And a lot of that is because of so many people in this room, not only my Kaodai friends, but so many of the scholars. I've learned so much from all of you diving into your work. So it's just been great. So I want to start with a video to get you into what Kaodai looks like. So this is just a few months ago, um, right about the time I met many of you in Korea for the first time. In, so every fall, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people go to southern Vietnam for this festival. <laughs> and yes, it really looks like this. It's a, one of the most beautiful places on earth.
right? So <clears throat> this project started in Can's uh, dining room <laughs> in Vietnam, uh, and we were trying to figure out where these, where this word ok, and what it means, and where it came from, uh, where it appears in the scriptures, and it's difficult to map out the cosmology of Cao Dai because there's not one book that just lays it out for you that we can translate. Instead, it pops up in different places in, uh, you know, sermons and uh, holy messages and prayers. And so we're piecing all of this together. And just to give you a sense of the challenge that we face in, in translating this material and trying to come up with the cosmology of Cao Dai, I'll just start with something that they say all the time, which is praise God. But to say praise God, uh, you say it with exactly 12 words, which invoke a sort of Confucius element, a Confucian element, a Taoist element, and a Buddhist element. And there uh, are a, there's a message from God himself uh, saying, I, I am the emperor of the universe and have 12 zodiacs in my hands. The number 12 is my number, which is why there are exactly 12 words in this uh, phrase. Um, and then you can go a little bit deeper. And so some people will go a little deeper with this. And they point out that the word for God actually is 10 words. Uh, and that's the 10 heavenly stems. And then, uh, but then that doesn't even get past uh, <laughs> the many meanings here, because this isn't even Vietnamese. When you look at the Vietnamese, which is actually Sino-Vietnamese, uh, you see that the word for universe, for example, uh, is actually referencing the Bagua and uh, that there's uh, sort of a Taoist element here that's lost when you just use the word universe. So it just gives you some of the sense of the challenges we face in trying to turn this into English in some way. Mm -hmm.